What is going on guys, it is Rowdy here, and I am bringing you another Gran Turismo 4 tutorial video. So before we get into it, I want to take a quick moment to thank you guys for 100 subs. I hit it yesterday as of recording this video, and the channel has really been taking off lately, which I'm kind of surprised over. It seems like all these tutorial videos and 4K PCSX2 content is really helping out, so I'm going to start cranking out more uploads more frequently. I've pretty much found better ways to improve my workflow so I can pump out a lot more videos, so the daily uploads will be returning, thanks to you guys. So with that, I just wanted to take a quick moment to give my thanks, and um, yeah, with that out of the way, let's get right into this video. So a few months ago, I made a tutorial on how to change the FOV in PCSX2. And I've been getting a lot of questions asking if it's possible on PS2, and at the time, I did not think it was. I thought you needed these codes in order to change that thing. Until now, because thanks to this comment that was left on my recent Chase Cam Looseness rotation video, uh, I actually discovered that you can indeed change the FOV on your PS2, and PCSX2 without the use of codes or mods or cheats or any of that, which I'm still kind of surprised over, so we're actually going to be going over how to do that in this video. So this actually utilizes the secret options menu that's been in the game, and it's been known about for several years. I think it was like discovered in 2006 or something, but that's pretty much what you use in order to change these settings, so I'm just gonna get in whatever car. Uh, I guess I'll get in the CLK. It doesn't really matter what car you use, obviously, but this is just gonna be for demonstration purposes to show you guys what all these settings do. So you can do this in any options menu in the game, so... Uh, another thing you're going to need, if you're on PCSX2, you're going to have to map your controller to Pad 2 on your PS2. Then you just need to switch your controller over to Slot 2. So once you've done that, um, I have to actually reconnect mine real quick. So like I said, you don't need a second controller to do this, but you are going to need to either swap your controller over to Port 2 if you're on your PS2 or you're going to have to set it to pad 2 if you're on PCSX2. So with me, I have a wheel for player 1 anyway, so I just plug in a second controller and I could just do it like that. PS2, you can just swap it over once you get into the options menu so you can actually navigate around. So the way you're going to want to do this is you're going to press certain buttons in a certain order on your controller. So what you're going to want to start out with is L1 up, L2 down, R1 left, R2 right, and then press start button twice. That's kind of a tongue twister trying to say it like that, but eventually you'll get the pattern down and you'll have it pretty well memorized, but doing that specific pattern will unlock these two secret options in the options menu, obviously. If you're on PCSX2, I had to actually remap my entire controller manually to get this because it wasn't working for me, so if you're running into that issue, just make sure your controller is mapped properly on PCSX2. Don't use the quick setup thing if you're on a DS4 because it's going to get like the Y rotation because it has like motion controls as well and that could get mapped to certain buttons that you need. So just manually map each button individually if you're on a DS4. But other than that, uh, once you have these two secret options menus open, uh, there's two different ones. You have secret and you have monitor. So we'll check out the secret one real quick. Pretty much this is just special settings you could do. So you can make a semi-custom grid in arcade mode. So all the cars on your favorites list will be the ones that show up as the opponents no matter what you're driving. The only problem is it's not fully custom as the colors will be random and you can't use it to spawn in special cars in the game. So like the motor triathlon the Nike 122, all the other special cars that you can't use in races in simulation mode, it's going to be the same thing with this. So That's why this is a bit semi-custom, and you can get duplicates even with multiple cars in the favorites list. So Not fully custom grid, but semi-custom, I guess you could say. 
and then you could set it to like race against certain types of or certain manufacturers as well. So just neat little extra options there. You are going to have to do that button pattern again to get back into them. So L1 up, L2 down, R1 left, R2 right, start button twice. And this is where all the juicy stuff is. So I've been screwing around with these settings a little bit and they're kind of confusing because they all do the same things, but they're also a little bit different at the same time. So I'm gonna try to explain them the best I can. So this first option, flag, I honestly have no idea what this does. Um, it says rotate Y, rotate X, and then both. I have no idea what this refers to or what it actually changes, but if anybody discovers it, you can go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll pin it or something. And uh, yeah, there's just some of these I can't figure out to like the life of me. So zoom, this pretty much sets your FOV, but it doesn't affect everything. I don't remember exactly what it affects, but instead I'll just show screenshots of the different camera angles in the game and you will see which ones have been changed and which ones haven't. So the ones that are going to be affecting your FOV pretty much are going to be the zoom, the distance option I'm pretty sure, and the overscan factor. Now one thing I can tell you about the overscan factor is that it's going to affect every single camera in the races. That includes the chase cam, the roof cam, the bumper cam, as well as like replay cams and stuff like that. So. The lower you set this, the wider the angle is going to be. The higher you set it, the narrower. So like higher, it's going to be more zoomed in. Lower, it's going to be wider. And for me, personally, I think 0.8 and 0.85 is a solid amount. You can go in between or you can go wherever you want if you feel like it. You can put it at zero and see like absolutely nothing in the car but feel like you're going light speed. Or you can set it to 2 if you're feeling like a real masochist and not being able to see anything. So, yeah, I pretty much just only mess with the overscan factor one because that one seems to be the best. You can do the zoom option instead and set it to 0.85 as well if you don't want to have everything else zoomed in. The only thing with this is I think it doesn't change the either the roof cam or the bumper cam. Or maybe it does, but just a lot less. You'll be seeing it in the screenshot comparisons anyways. Distance is another weird one. Uh, I'll just show screenshots of what it does because I honestly can't remember at the time of recording this. Width and height, I honestly wouldn't even mess with these. This is kind of... I believe these are made for like ultra wide setups. So if you want to stretch your screen out wider, that's what this option is for. But it's still going to compress it back down for your aspect ratio on your screen or whatever. It's kind of hard to explain, but honestly, these two are not even important enough to mess with. As far as aspect goes, I can't remember if I lowered or raised this, but this did make the screen squish together, kind of like you're running a 16 by nine in-game aspect ratio on a four by three screen, and then it just squishes everything together. So I just set this to one and I leave it like that. I don't know why it's on 0.97 by default, but I'm gonna set it to one. I think what this does is change the double ratio of the screen. It, I know it's kind of weird, but if like say your screen is set to 16 by nine and then you change this to 2.0, then it's gonna think that you're at 32 by nine or something like that. I don't know. I say I'm going to be explaining over what all these things do, but I can't even remember it off the top of my head, to be honest. As for border width, I have not noticed any differences with these options, so I would just leave them at zero as well. They're not really that important. The only one I'm still curious about is flag, rotate X, rotate Y. I have no idea what that means, but um, yeah, these are pretty much very vaguely described at the bottom. So I have my overscan factor just set to 0.85. So let's go ahead and let me change my screen resolution first. So we shall go into a race and see what it looks like with the overscan factor set to 0.85. 
and I can tell already that the roof cam is definitely wider than normal. It's usually pretty narrow without any changes done to it. Same with the bumper cam, I have the cockpit view thing enabled on my PCSX2, so this should be a bumper view, but it does still feel wider to me. And for the chase cam, it is definitely wider. Maybe not as wide as I would like it for this car, but you can change it to however you want. But 0.8, it would be the absolute highest I would go to. So I'm actually gonna go back and change that real quick. Set that to 0 0.80. Actually, I'm gonna go a little bit wider just to give it a more of a dramatic effect. So you can actually see a difference a lot better. And I can tell right now, this view of the track looks a lot more wide angle than before. So it does affect every single camera on the game. Pretty much what Overscan does is it renders out more surrounding area of your screen and then shrinks it down to fit to it. So yeah, it pretty much makes every single camera angle wider. But we're going to get back into it and yeah, you can obviously see a difference now and it affects every single one. So, like I said, you can do this on the PS2. The only thing that's different about, like, my setup versus what you're gonna be able to pull off on a PC, or on a PS2, is the fact that I have my GT3 uh, chase cam rotation slash looseness thing in my PCSX2, so... My gameplay is still going to look a little bit different. Obviously, the resolution is going to be a lot better on PCSX2. But as far as the chase cam physics go, it's going to look a lot better on PCSX2 regardless. But if you are stuck with a PS2 and this is the only thing you can do, I can tell you right now that this option does make driving in the chase cam and even driving overall, like even the wider angle on the roof cam and the bumper cam it makes it so much better because it's not all zoomed up it's not all in your face it makes it easier to tell where the car is going and it kind of feels like you do get a little bit more rotation anyways because it feels like it's further behind it, the car even though it's really not it's just a wider angle the only reason why i didn't record this off ps2 is one resolution two i don't have a capture card to actually record ps2 hooked up at the time so I don't see the point in me using a camera to record my PS2 screen like it's 2011. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoy playing GT4 a hell of a lot more than before. I honestly had no clue this was even possible on vanilla PS2 without mods or codes or anything. But thanks to the comment left in my recent video, I have figured out that it's actually possible. And like I said, I've known about these like secret menus forever. I just never crossed my mind to actually try out what the options do. And no other forum post or YouTube video has actually gone over what these things do either, so... Figured I'd go ahead and show you guys how to do it since I've already done the PCSX2 version. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy playing your Grand Turismo 4 a lot more, and uh, stay tuned for more 4K content.